So my inability to focus on one project at a time has kicked in again. And I went ahead and created a clack clone, which basically makes virtualized key sounds when I either type or release keys on my keyboard. So in my videos, I do have a virtualized keyboard playing where um, you might have seen it before if I turn this on. When I type, you can hear some keys typing. That's not my keyboard. That's just a virtualization that kind of plays sounds as I type. And this was a paid product called Clack App. It's like five bucks. I downloaded it and I love it. But I decided, you know what? Why not just make my own, learn a little bit about Go, learn a little bit about creating a virtualized keyboard. Before I walk through the code, if you guys are interested, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So I'm gonna say go run main.go. And then we're gonna go ahead and just pretend like we're typing. So basically what this program is doing is every time I type in a certain key, it randomly selects one of these down keys and up keys and plays that sound. Secondly, the enter key and the space key have a little bit different sounding and also have a mouse. So if you hear, and you might ask, where did I get all these sounds? I actually just took this microphone that I'm talking into. I put it up to my keyboard and I actually recorded all of these. Every single key press and key release I recorded, I spliced it up in Audacity and I made it into an MP3 file. So I had fun building this and it didn't take too long, especially with ChatGPT, it really helped me out. But the idea of how this works is it is using a third party library called a robot TN, a robot N, just like a Go library for hooking in and doing like robot type of things. And then also I'm using a library for processing the MP3 files. So when this program first runs in the main function, you can pass in an argument if you want to override the default. So like you could basically make all these same files with whatever keyboard you want and just go ahead and just load that in. So then down here, we basically make a context using that library we talked about to specify the, the bit rate, which is like 48,000, how many channels are in the MP3 file, which is two, I forget what this two's for, and then also the buffer size. Some of the stuff I'm not really too sure about, I kind of just use the defaults that ChatGPT told me to do. But yeah, I had to play around with this until I got it matching the MP3 files. Okay, so we have the context down here. We have some functions I'll talk about in just a second. But here is the important part. We have this hook that we can register to key events. So when someone types in a key, it calls this function. And based on the key that they type in, I play different types of sounds. So this is going to call schedule sound down enter. When I press the enter key, we got schedule sound down space. And then same thing when you release a key, it plays the up sound. Okay. Then I, I do the same thing with the mouse down and mouse uh, hold and mouse up. So let's look at schedule sound because this is where it gets kind of interesting. This is a function that basically adds to a weight group. If you haven't used Go before, you basically have these weight groups where you can push values into it. And then down at the bottom of your program, you typically want to wait until that weight group is all empty. Um, and so as your stuff, your asynchronous processing finishes, you can just delete from the weight group. Okay, so over here we have a go function. It just calls play sound. So how this works is it takes in a key such as enter, and then it looks up the MP3 for that key. And then it creates a context and a player, and then it rewinds the decoder back to the start. And then it basically pushes stuff into a buffer and plays that buffer with the player dot write. So we have all the raw bytes for the sound wave, and then we basically write it to this player and then the player makes the, the noise. Now, the reason we're doing this all in a Go routine is so that we can have multiple sounds all overlaying with each other, right? So as I type, before it was just playing one sound and it just was like one sound at a time. It didn't really work too well. But if you can type really fast, you want those keystrokes to be overlaid on top of each other, right? So all of these things are getting sent off into their own Go routine and they play behind the scenes. And when they finish, it basically pops from the, uh, the wake group. But yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to share that with you all. I think it was pretty fun. This by the way, this is all open source. So I'm going to make this MIT if I remember to do this. Just go to this repo link. It'll be in the description where you can play around with this, clone it yourself, and add on to it if you want to. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this walkthrough of a Go program. Have a good day and happy coding.